Now normally when you travel on a train, the only musical accompaniment you get is from somebody with their personal headphone and it's going t -t -t -t, and you're desperately trying to identify the tune. But when Ian Aspin boarded a train recently from Manchester, well the music was loud and clear. It's commuter time at Manchester Piccadilly and the station is filled with trains waiting to take the workers home. But look closer and you see that not everyone on the platforms are commuters. That's because the train they're waiting for is different too. They're waiting to catch the 1842 to Sheffield, the folk train. Well, I've got my ticket, I'm ready to go. The only thing is, I've no idea what to expect. All I can say is I'm going on a journey to Edale in the heart of the Peak District countryside and as soon as I get on that train, the music will start. The in-flight, or should I say on-track entertainment, is supplied by a band called the Cajun Specials. Dave, how did you come to be in a folk band that plays on a train? Well, it's a very good question. That's, I, I, think it was, I think we were dragged into it to begin with, and uh, we've never looked back. It's a great, great experience. Well, it's a very different gig than playing in a pub. How different? Yeah, what's good about it is that you can make as much noise as you like. The people who don't like it just get off the train at their normal stuff. And the people who don't like it or can't get off the train, it's just too bad. <laughs> get off! Life was invented for old life, you know. Do you know what I mean? Now, Glenn, you're a regular on this train, aren't you? How did you come to hear about it? Well, we saw the posters in Marple, and I really wanted to go because I love the Peak District. I go to Edale Walking, Castleton Walking, etc. And my friend Alan here did me a nice job on the washing machine at home. And so, to, to thank, because obviously he wouldn't take any money, so to thank him, I treated him to a night on the train. And he's regretted it ever since. <laughs> so you got into it then, did you? We got into it then, and we've, we've, this is two years ago exactly, on the February one. What's the appeal though? Because it, yeah, you're cramped just... in, aren't you? And everybody's pushing and shoving, it's well, packed. It, it, this is what it's like, it's, it's live and it's fun. Um, it's just a really nice night out for, for a midweek break. Can't beat it. What, what are you doing on this train and what's the good about it? Well, it's just the people and the entertainment and everything, yeah? It's, and the um, pump's good when we get to it, town. It's love and peace in all the bad in the world. We've been coming on here now for like three years. Uh, the music is the message, which is love and peace. Then we go to the Ramblers. And, uh, and, have, a few, and have a few beers as well. Oh, of course, yeah, we have a few along the way, but there's no uh, aggression. It's just peace and love. All along the way. It's exciting. You meet people that uh, you've never met before. It's a good atmosphere. Yeah. I met him on the train. We met on the, we met on the train now, and it's three years. And you say, hello, and everybody's happy. Peace and love. You know. I suppose if there's peace and love, nobody, none of the commuters are going to smash an accordion over anyone's head, are they? Well, the commuters sometimes complain, uh, but not a lot, because... It's very easy to forget that this is just an ordinary scheduled train and in the next carriage are regular commuters. What do you think of the folk train? I love it really, but you know, I'm not a big folky myself, but there's a lot of it in the valley and it's great fun and it brings it all in, but frankly, you know, it's sort of, I put my earphones on and try and run to the other end of the train if I can. Has this taken you by surprise, this folk train then? <laughs> What do you think? It's a bit mad. <laughs> Definitely grand, I've no objection, but frankly the arches is more important to me than it. I always listen to that. to admit it feels a little bizarre travelling home on a dark cold night in the northwest hearing the warm sounds of Cajun swamp music from Louisiana. Totally bizarre. A 
As the folk train arrives at its destination in Edale, the regulars know that the pub will be just as crowded as the train. They get ready to jump off and race to the bar at the Rambler Inn. There are just a few moments of peace and quiet before Cajun kicks in. The traditional venue for folk music is definitely not a train, but it's certainly, uh, it, it's certainly a nice idea. Um, folk music has been performed in pubs. The oldest music in, in the North West um, came out of the churches. There's nothing pure about the folk music of the North West because everything in the North West has evolved. Uh, it's, it's a hotbed of activity, a sort of melting pot of all sorts of um, influences because of the port of Liverpool and the, the immigration of um, various groups of people and they've all brought their own uh, aspects of their own folk cultures with them so our own um, folk customs in the North West are overlaid with lots of other, other layers and it makes it much more interesting. I think it's very appropriate for the folk train to come to Edale because in the past the ordinary people of Manchester came out on the train to walk in the hills over here, the songs about that, but the folk train is a, a, a means of everybody coming together. Cajun music doesn't fit in terribly with the northwest of England. It's been uh, quite an interesting um, new venture over here for people to play Cajun music, uh, but it's not it's not a thing that we have in the northwest normally. But it's great on the train. Cajun dancing was a test for my stamina, and my dance moves were put to shame by one of the folk train regulars. Well, I feel a bit worn out after that Cajun dancing. How does this help to promote the Peak District then? Basically, it's a fun way of showing people how easy it is to get to the Peak District from the centre of Manchester by train, just to show that you don't need to have a car to visit the National Park. Yeah, but they come here, they don't see much of the National Park, do they? They do in the summer actually, it's, it's really nice in the summer, come out on a nice hot evening, you can sit outside, have a bit of dancing outside maybe. How did the idea come about in the first place? We've actually borrowed the idea from the Penniston line, where they have jazz and blues trains, and that's something we might try ourselves in future. What did the band members say when you first said we're going to be playing on the train? Probably a little bit sceptical to begin with, but uh, we started off with sort of four or five playing the first time we did this, and now there's 10 or 11 people. And uh, you only have to give people the train date once, and it, it goes into the diary, and you don't need to remind everybody. Everybody turns up at the appointed time. Why did you choose Cajun music for tonight? It has a drive to it, and uh, no matter where you play, the majority of people pick up on that drive. And you, you look around, and everybody's tapping their feet and uh, kind of bouncing around to the music. Just how interested are people in, in folk music now, then? Well, one of the difficulties with uh, trying to promote folk music is actually organising venues where it can be played, and folk music really needs to be played live. After a short stay in the pub, the folk fans return to Edale Station for the journey home. Well, that was a whirlwind introduction to folk music and to the folk train. I must admit, it's been a quite a strange evening, but I have enjoyed it. Everybody here's getting the train back to Manchester. I'm going the other way to catch a somewhat quieter train. Perhaps it'll be a little less interesting. <laughs>